Right now on Tuesday nights, Tim is going through a series on the battle of sin. And in part one, he dealt with the sin of pride. And I felt that it would be beneficial to make a video uh, dealing with some of the own, my own issues that recently God has really dealt with me to discipline me, to make me more set apart, more holy, and more like Christ and less proud. And uh, I guess around five, five or six months ago, I went over to Tim's house, to the Conway's house to be encouraged. I had a long day. I felt I need to be encouraged. And I went over there and God had such encouragement for me in a way that I did not anticipate, I did not expect. And I sat down and I'm talking to Tim and at some point Tim looks at me and he says to me, he says, James, in Matthew 7, it says the measure that you judge out with will be judged right back at you. And he said to me these chilling words. He said, James, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes on Judgment Day. I tell you, that hit me. That, it, it, it shook me up. And I thank God that right as I heard that, I acknowledged it as truth and I praised the Lord. I didn't outwardly praise the Lord, but inside I was praising God. Because the devil was right there saying, look James, Tim is judgmental. He, he doesn't, you know, he's just judging you. No, that wasn't true. Tim was loving me. He loved me enough to tell me a truth that I needed to hear. And I heard it from someone who I had great respect for. And therefore the weight of what was being said hit me as it ought. And it's exactly what I needed. And Many of my failures were mentioned that night, and that was the best thing that could have happened for me. And not only that, it was an answer to a prayer I had just prayed the following day and that morning. Around that morning, I had prayed, Lord, do whatever it takes to make me like Christ. And so God heard my prayer. And so He sees an imperfection in me. Obviously, God allowed Tim to see this obvious imperfection, and Tim lovingly told me the truth. And God allowed my heart to receive it, to be humbled, to not try to deny it and to press on in pride, but to see my failure. And God showed me, you know what, James, you've been too judgmental, too quick to judge. You know, right when I got saved, I was so easy to say, you're lost, you're saved, you're lost. You're... And then God put me through my own battle with sin, with idolatry, to, to let me see, see, look, James. You know, God's saying, look, James, look, you're falling into this. You keep going back to this. And are you a slave of your sin? And no, I wasn't a slave of my sin. But I started to realize, you know what? There is a real struggle that people are going through. And you can be very quick to judge and say, well, look, this person's um, falling into pornography. They've got to be lost. Yes, the Bible says no sexual immoral person will inherit the kingdom. That's true. But what's going to happen over the time? As time goes on, if they're, still a, if they're going back to that sin and they're a slave of it, then they should have no assurance they're a Christian. But as time goes on and they continue to have victory as I'm there to encourage them, not to judge them and beat them down, then God's going to be glorified as they break free of that sin and they prove that they were a Christian. And I remember even reading about King David. If King David came to me and said, James, I've murdered, I've committed adultery, Right when I was first saved, I would have said, you're not a Christian. Yet obviously he was. Look at the fruit of his life. He loved the Lord. Obviously he did. But he had a struggle. And so the Lord put me through an idolatry in my heart where I was going emotionally to other sources, another source instead of Christ. And I wasn't satisfied in the Lord. And the greatest evidence of that was my lack of prayer. And when you don't pray, you're going to be judgmental. When you don't pray, you're going to run to idols. When you don't pray, you're not going to be satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, even this morning, I remember waking up and I wanted to kind of roll back in bed. I woke up before my alarm went off and the Lord was telling me, James, I woke you up right now. Get out of your bed and go seek my face. And when I was out praying, being with the Lord was far better than being in that bed. And if I stayed in that bed, I would have fell into something that day. I would have got proud. I would have thought highly of myself. We need pride to get put to death so bad. And God loves us so much if we're His children that He's going to discipline us. And so I just wanted to testify about that, about God's love for my own soul, that He loved me to have a brother tell me the truth in love, to rebuke me, that I could then repent of that and strive to live a more holy, more Christ-like life. To be not like the world, but to be like Christ. So God help me continue and others to... Listen, we can't be overcritical. 
I'm sure there's something in my own self, even in this video, that you could find and you could rip and tear me apart in a moment. And the reality is that's what I was doing to a lot of people, finding the one flaw and imperfection and ripping them apart. With all that said, though, we all will be judged by God, and we need to be ready. And if there's some unchecked sin, if we don't have clear consciences, we need to deal with it. 1 Timothy 1.19 says many shipwreck, people shipwreck because they don't hold to a good conscience. So if God is showing you sin in your life like He's done in mine, may God help us humble ourselves and forsake it and cling to Christ. I mean, Jesus is more beautiful than anything in this world. There's no hope but in Him. So may God break us of pride, and I pray as Tim continues to do this series that the Lord reveals more sin in my life to make me more like Christ. And may He do the same for everyone out there, that we would be like Christ, that we would love like Christ. So God, help us. Amen.